Hello, my name is Matan, and in this video, we'll go over the homing process in Ajito controllers. We'll shortly go over what is an axis homing process. We'll go over the different homing types and steps available to build the desired homing process. Then, we'll show a few possible homing scenarios and run the homing process from our IDE+. We'll be using an AGD301 and the top axis of our gantry station for the demos in this video. Let's get started. Homing is a sequence of motions which brings the machine to a predetermined physical position. It's typically used after powering on the system. It can be used, for example, in cases where an incremental encoder is used, so the actual initial position of the motor at power on isn't known. In Ajito controllers, you can easily define a custom homing sequence to match any application. We also provide a few predefined homing sequences which are most commonly used. Let's go over to PC Suite and go to the homing window. Editing of the homing sequence is done with a right click, and here are the possible homing sequence steps. Each step has its own parameters and a description at the top. There's also a timeout parameter for each step, which defines the maximal amount of time allowed for that specific step. For the immediate steps, such as motor on, the timeout parameter can be chosen arbitrarily, for example, a thousand milliseconds. And for other steps where motion occurs, the timeout parameter should be configured according to the maximal expected duration. Most of the steps are self-explanatory, and we'll see a few examples in this video involving many of them. But I want to go over some of the steps that might not be very straightforward. Jog to home switch. The home switch is a digital input which, when toggled, signifies your home position. It's defined in the I.O. page. Jog means to simply move at a certain speed, and the direction is determined by the home switch input state and the speed sign. So this step simply moves at a specified speed and waits for a toggle in the digital input you specified as a home switch. Configure position lock. Position lock allows you to lock on to the position when a specified input signal was triggered. We have a separate video on this feature, link in the description. This feature is very helpful in homing sequences. You can configure the lock source and polarity from here, and we can see which values to choose in the lock window. For example, if I wish to choose discrete input number 2 with an inverted polarity, I'd write minus 2 in the homing step parameter. And if I want to choose the index signal of axis B with a normal polarity, I'd write 31. Jog to lock. This step moves at the specified speed until a lock event we previously configured occurs. Okay, let's continue with an example. Let's load a predefined example and go over the step parameters. The parameters in this predefined example are chosen arbitrarily. Don't forget to update the parameters according to your application. First, the motor is turned on. Then, we send the motor in the negative direction until the position error passes a certain threshold. Make sure to use a suitable speed. We don't want to hit the hard stop too strongly. At that point, we set the position to zero. The timeout is set to 30,000. This step must finish in less than 30 seconds. Next, we start moving slowly in the positive direction, looking for an index signal. As a side note, we have to make sure we don't move too quickly so we don't miss the index mark. 8,000 counts or less is fine. If we use the position lock we talked about earlier instead, we can move much faster. Okay, once we've reached an index signal, we go back to that index position and set the position there to zero. Then we end the homing process. We can save these steps to flash, 
and we can also save them as a homing sequence file. Let's look at the homing sequence file to understand how the homing steps are stored. We can see all the homing steps are stored in an array. Each step has 10 available indices in the homing def array. Let's look at the first two steps in the array to understand this better. The first step is motor on, which we can see is step type number eight. This is the value stored in the first index. We set its value to one, which is the second index value, and we give it a timeout value of 1,000, which is exactly 16,384 samples of our controller. The next seven parameters are zero, since the motor on step type doesn't have any more parameters. The next step starts at index number 11. The hard stop by high error step type is number 10. And we can see the following parameters filled out the same way as we set them in PC Suite. And again, the timeout value is in units of controller samples. The next steps start from indices 21, 31, 41, and so on. All right, let's see it in action. First, from the homing window interface. Now, let's run the exact same homing sequence from a user program using homing def. Let's copy the text from the homing sequence file we saved. We'll create a function called home and paste the text there. We also need to add the relevant axis to all the parameters. Next, I'll call this function in our main task and run it using the homing on keyword. As a side note, in a typical application, we don't need to paste the text of the entire homing sequence file, as it's already saved to flash in the homing def array. I'm doing this to demonstrate that you can change any of these parameters from the user program if you wish. There may be times where, depending on your setup, you'd want to change certain aspects of your homing sequence. For example, change the set position parameter, or maybe change the speed of one of the steps. In that case, you can change the specific homing def indices you care about. Let's run another quick homing example, now using the position lock feature, so we'll be able to move at a much higher speed. I'll remove the steps relating to the index, and I'll add two new steps. First, I'll configure the position lock. I'm looking at the index mark of axis C with a normal polarity, which means I'll input the source as 30. Next, I'll add the jog to lock step and input a much higher speed than before. Now, let's run it. Okay, one last thing I want to show you is running the homing sequence from our IDE Plus while checking the homing status to know when we can continue with the rest of the code. We'll start by waiting for the power up sequence to finish. Next, we'll wait for the auto phase process to finish. Then we'll run the homing sequence as defined in the homing def array. And finally, we'll check the homing status keyword to find out when the homing sequence has finished. We can also put this piece of code in a function like we did before and execute it at the beginning of the main task. We went over how to create a homing sequence in Agito controllers using our homing tool. However, you don't necessarily need to use our homing tool. You can create any function you wish in our IDE Plus, regardless of the homing def array, to act as a homing sequence. Using our homing tool is very convenient, but if it doesn't fully meet your needs, you can always create your own homing function. That way you have the utmost versatility. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.